good afternoon friends i am back again after a long hiatus because uh, end semester exams is going on in my institute as so i have to correct papers and also have to still have to conduct an examination and correct papers i have to fix the question papers and also had my own personal issues with my own research and some other things so those have to be taken care but by the way i have not forgotten that i do have a youtube channel to which i am also committed and really have to do certain things so one might be wanting that the calculus want to move yes the calculus one will move the calculus uh, story of uh, this calculus for the enthusiast series will move uh, but uh, today i am again bringing back my uh, bookshelf series so uh, books from my bookshelf so so it, it's the books which i have enjoyed it's the books which i have in my own it they are not library books actually so what i am going to talk about this time is about books which talk about complex analysis just like real analysis there is something called complex analysis where you talk about functions of a complex variable z which is written as x plus i y where x and y are real numbers and i is the square root of minus 1 uh, these books don't start trying to start with they, they assume that you know what are complex numbers essentially and then try to build up an analysis which tries to be quite analogous to real analysis for complex numbers but surprisingly when you try to build a calculus for complex numbers or analysis for complex numbers they they differ or diverge away from real analysis and have things which you might find very surprising and the study of complex function sometimes called just function theory is a very important thing especially for engineering students in electrical engineering whatever many many engineering students in aerospace engineering because these tools are heavily applied in engineering mathematicians anyway need them it's unbelievable that when you might say that oh complex numbers are what they are okay just complex plane that i draw which i it's called the argon diagram is just like r2 so instead of the po any point which is given by the coordinates x y in r2 is now by now it is called x plus i y where i is the root over of root of minus 1 and you give a name x is the real part of the complex number and y is the imaginary part of the complex number usually a complex number is denoted as z but when you make this representation of a point in r2 and call that as a complex plane the analysis completely changes the it, it is not that it just becomes function of two variables that whatever you know about function of two variables has to be the has to be the end game for a function of complex variables though structurally a point represented by x y and or represented by z equal to x plus i y looks the same geometrically the same point so because so between the complex plane and r2 there is a one to one map but that does not say that whatever has been done for function of two variables will work for complex complex variables and that's the whole point where mathematics sometimes can become non-intuitive your intuition can mislead you so intuition is great but the intuition sometimes allows us to take leap in the imagination which takes us to different heights but sometimes intuition can go very actually so i'll now tell you about four books let me just show them in succession and then discuss them one by one so i will start about books which should be first studied by people who are entering to do a phd in mathematics or in the final year of student in mathematics and then i'll go to books which would be helpful for engineers so here is a book which is a very old book but it's now published by dover publication which is a publication in us is a publisher in us very famous for publishing very old and classical good books in mathematics and physics 
Theory of Functions Part 1 and Part 2, written by Conrad, Conrad Knopp, who also has a very beautiful book on infinite series, which I told about the one I bought from Calcutta in my book series about Calcutta. So this book is a book sh that should be read by each and every student who wants a PhD in mathematics. Because this book st starts from the very basic thing about how to look at sets in R2, what kind of sets in uh, we can think about in R2 or the complex plane. And then, because that those are the domains or sets on which functions would be, functions of complex variables would be defined. And then moves on to do what a normal analysis book would do or a calculus book would do is talk about limits of complex functions, talk about continuity, differentiability, integration, and the famous Cauchy's integral theorem and all kind of thing, Gurshard's proofs of the Cauchy theorem, that on a closed cut we want to integrate a so-called holomorphic or analytic function, the answer is zero. That's amazing. This certain things that happen in complex very or in the analysis of complex function never happens for real function because if you take a derivative of a real function, you cannot guarantee that a function which has a derivative must have a second derivative. But for a complex function, once it is differentiable, it's always differentiable. So any differentiable function also has the name analytic function because in for real functions, a function is called analytic if it can be expressed as a power series, that is an infinite series. So when you are talking about infinite series like a Maclaurin, Maclaurin series, then you need to know all the derivatives, infinitely differentiable. So here for a complex variable, when a comp function of a complex variable, once it is differentiable, it is always differentiable. So that thing, that is why it is called analytic, keeping in that analogy. because for in real case, for a function to be analytic, you need all the derivatives to exist. So that, that's the idea. So this book no, has two parts actually. The second part is quite advanced because it goes into things like Weierstrass's factor theorem, Mittag-Leffler theorem, uh, w periodic functions and doubly periodic functions. And there is one very important result which I like uh, that uh, uh, a bounded entire function must be constant. There is no non-constant bounded entire function. Entire function is a function which is analytic or differentiable over the whole complex plane. If such a thing is bounded, then it cannot be anything else other than the constant function. So for example, sine of z, sine of the sine z function, you know how to do it, e to the power z, minus e to the power minus z by 2i. So sine z function. So sine z function is a complex number, complex uh, complex sine function. This function is differentiable at every z in the complex plane. So you cannot say mod sine z is strictly less than 1. The absolute value of sine z is strictly less than 1. If x is a real variable, then mod sine x is lying between, is less strictly less than 1 because it is lying between minus 1 and plus 1. So you cannot say that because uh, of the Louisville's theorem, because it is an entire function, if it is bounded, it must be constant and sin z is not a constant function. See, there is a huge difference. The complex sine function is hugely different from the real sine function. And there where lies the fun. So the fun begins, you are in a different kind of journey and that's, and but helps you to do fantastic application. For example, in aer aerodynamics, in electrical engineering, complex variables and com fun theory function of complex variables are abound. In fact, uh, every mathematician, in fact, engineers who are, who are graduating in electrical engineering and uh, maybe civil engineering or maybe kind of electrical aer aerospace should have a look at this book. So this is one book I would recommend. As even if you read more, the symbols are pretty modern here. One can say, oh, this old book, the symbols would be not modern. No, 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 symbols are absolutely modern. And you will get things like uh, uh, the, the stories about Riemann mapping theorem and uh, the Mittag-Leffler theorem and all those kind of things, which will be here. See, the whole thing is that in, uh, part two of this book has pretty advanced complex analysis. 
and mathematics students should read this book it doesn't matter what other book you read you can read more advanced books see this book was originally published long back i'll tell you the date you might uh, it was originally published in uh, 1945 by dover publication so you can say oh this is very very old but classical analysis but the material that you have here is so important till date and the writing of this person is so beautiful every proof that is given is so neat so clear that you really need to concentrate on this book first before reading any other book for example i can tell you a book which is a very modern book published by the american mathematical society in its graduate series in mathematics series i mean graduate uh, series series in mathematics and that graduate studies in mathematics in that series mm. so this is a this is a book by steven robert St robert green and steven cron steven cron is a very be beautiful writer in mathematics and function theory of one complex variable there is a function theory of many complex variable like many real variable is uh, that that's a very difficult subject and so it's a indian edition of this book done by university press so this book has a lot of modern things like a lot of discussion about harmonic function this this book also has the the conrad knobs book also has this has a lot of modern things so if i look look at that print you will have look more modern modern looking symbols for example here more modern looking symbols possibly so you might think that oh this is much more modern but no no the things that you find here you will find here but there are some things that you you will find here in this book by steven kranz will not be there because a lot of developments post 1945 has been because 1957 conrad knob was dead so now post that time lot of things that has been come into complex analysis can come into this book so for a person who is going to do a phd i would suggest first a reading of this book or for any mathematician who can take a cup of coffee in his leisure days maybe another for example somebody works in some kind of thing like graph theory where it doesn't bother much about complex analysis can still read this book theory of functions as a coffee coffee book during his coffee time right any student graduate student who is going to do a phd in mathematics or even in applied mathematics like fluid dynamics it's huge complex analysis huge complex analysis like a uh, things like the cauchy riemann conditions for a function to be uh, analytic that or differentiable that is heavily used in fluid mechanics so that kind of thing that that sort of learning can come by taking this as a second book so even for applied mathematicians who are working in mechanics fluid mechanics or physicists they would definitely have I many benefit heavily by reading these two books but this book is a must for any mathematician doesn't matter what is your background whether you do discrete mathematics or whether you are doing optimization where you say oh, okay i don't need this kind of things but you need it because it gives you mathematical pleasure and widens your mathematical view anybody working in geometry has to have certain deep understanding of complex analysis and these two books would be helpful now i come to a book which both undergraduates and graduate students as well as engineers can use now i'll tell two books the first one is called complex variables it is also a dover book harmonic and analytic functions this is a very unique book there's no book i've ever seen which has the type of contents it has the first part of the book deals with analysis on r2 function of two real variables so then that will allow you to see what is the difference between the complex variable analysis of over complex variable and analysis of function analysis on two variables calculus of two variables calculus of complex variables and calculus of two variables are different but they are linked by a special kind of function called harmonic function so harmonic functions are functions whose laplacians are equal to zero that is say you are function of two variables u u x1 x2 so the laplacian here the laplacian of this function is del square u del x1 square plus del square u del x2 square and if there is a u for which this is equal to 0 then we say that 
it satisfies the harmonic equation. So any u which satisfies the condition that the Laplacian equal to 0. Laplacian is nothing. You take the gradient of a function u of two variables and then take the divergence of the new function, the new vector, right? So divergence of the gradient vector. So that gives you the Laplacian. So the Laplacian function, any u for which the Laplacian function is 0 is called a harmonic function. And in Stephen Clange's book, there's a beautiful proof in this whole section which shows you that any Lapla any harmonic function is actually the real part of some complex function. So there is a deep link between this harmonic function and complex functions. So that that link is understood and harmonic functions are studied in great detail here. For example, it starts with calculus in the plane, means it is talking about integral calculus of functions of two real variables. It is not talking about function, complex functions at all. And once you know, have a good idea of what is, how calculus is really done on two real variables, various types of domains or not two, which, which are the similar type of domains you can think in complex plane, then he gets into the complex plane business and then at every step he shows you the difference. So you can really appreciate the worth and power of complex analysis, that how different it is from the analysis of function of two variables. So this is very, very important. So please take a careful note of this book, Complex Variables, Harmonic and Analytic Functions by Francis Jeff Flanagan. It's available in the, on Amazon also. It was when I bought it, it was, it was first written in 1972, but I think Dover, uh, I don't know, Dover published it in 1983. And it's still available. It's it's uh, it's it's a it's a nice book, right? So it's a beautiful book. And I, I if you really have to teach undergraduates, there is no book which can match this. There, are, of course, there are more excellent complex analysis books which have not come yet, which will come in the next part. So this this book series will have two parts. One is complex variables, books on complex variables one, and books on complex variables two. If I have to select one book which is workable especially for master students in India and also for undergraduate students in engineering is a book, very new one, A Friendly Approach to Complex Analysis by Sara Sasane and Omol Sasane. This is actually a husband wife team in London School of Economics. So this book is beautiful because it takes the right amount of subject that is required for undergraduate studies. For example, it contains uh, when it starts, it starts in the preface, it tells you in, gives you a, a good idea of what they are trying to discuss here. It talks first about complex numbers and their geometry. It talks about the various types of sets on the complex plane, it talks about various types of complex function. Some complex functions can be multi-valued in reality, right, like log of, log of z. So, but we do not always work with multi-valued function functions by their form by the very name cannot be multi-valued. So you just work with one branch called the principal branch. Then they talk about complex differentiability, Cauchy integral theorem and their consequences, Taylor and Laura series and harmonic functions. Harmonic functions are always very important, they're key. But there are many things beyond it which are discussed in the other th other, other two books, the first two books, like analytic meromorphic functions, analytic continuations, right? Mm, uh, Analytic, um, analytic continuations of a complex a function of complex variable, Weierstrass factorization theorem, mittag leffler theorem. And in fact, uh, there are several books which I will not discuss today and will come in the next uh, discussion, is that there's this famous theorem called the prime number theorem. And that prime number theorem can also be proved using complex variables. But of course, it needs a lot of work. It's not that it just you can state and prove it in two lines. So, but this book is very, very friendly. If you, if you want to work out step by step, this book gives everything done step by step without missing the details. So this book goes everything step by step without missing the details. This is, a, this is published by World Scientific and it is published in 2014 and the Indian reprint was in 2019. So I have the Indian reprint, of course, uh, though otherwise it's very costly, the, the other one. Uh, so that's not, not pocket friendly, if you want to say. 
So, but this book doesn't get into too much things which the undergraduates cannot understand. This book, every undergraduate engineering student and math student, maybe master's students in math, they can understand and everything is done very step by step. It's so that you do not miss out on anything. So this is the book which every undergraduate engineering student should consider if they want to keep at least one book in their hands for complex analysis. And they, it's really a friendly approach. Means, um, uh, I, I remember it was, I, I, I had not known of this one, you know, one of my nephews who is now doing statistics in the US. He was a student here at IIT Kanpur. He one day called me up and said, Mamaji, okay, come on, have you heard of this book? And he asked me certain questions from there. Then I looked it up and said, oh, okay, it looks very nice. And so I got a copy because sometimes you can, you know, I mean, a lot of things which I don't teach in uh, in the class, but of course I discuss, I can discuss with my friends on the YouTube, right? So let's, uh, so this book is extremely good. So I would rather uh, tell any student of bachelor's in mathematics, bachelor's in engineering, this is a good book you should really consider. I'm again holding it for you. It's Sara Masad Sasane and Amol Sasane. So husband wife team, husband wife need not always fight as it is shown in all the TV series and everything. They can also collaborate, no, sorry, collaborate and write nice books. So I hope you enjoyed this session. Complex variables are fascinating stuff. And as I always tell you that, uh, as I gave you the difference between sine of a complex number, that is complex sine function and the real sine functions are two different games. Hmm. So I would rather stop here and to enjoy the Saturday evening. I'll soon come up with my continuation of the calculus classes. Thank you. Thank you very much.